In a column in The Guardian, uh, you said that Biden had the ability to stop what is going on in Gaza um, if he, uh, and stop uh, weapons going to uh, Israel. Um, I guess my question is, do you think Biden is a war criminal uh, for not <laughs> stopping weapons going towards Israel in what you consider a genocide? That is a good question. And uh, by the way, that Guardian piece feels very vindicated this week because he had a chat with Netanyahu and immediately Netanyahu opened a crossing, which again reminds us that the American president does have a lot of power and leverage over the Israeli government if they choose to use it. Look, um, it's a great question. I think that I interviewed Francesca Albanese, the UN Special Rapporteur for the Occupied Palestinian Territory, some I'm sure you're not a fan of. And she made the point that Biden could be liable for war crimes. She, he could be in the dock one day. I'm not an international lawyer, just like I'm not a military strategist. Is he a war criminal? I don't know. He's certainly complicit in what looked like war crimes in Gaza. If, as every human rights group says, Israel is committing what look like clear war crimes in Gaza, bombing refugee camps, killing people who are unarmed, killing children at a disproportionately high rate, then he's providing the weaponry. And to use an analogy again from everyday life, if I give my friend a knowingly keep selling guns to criminals and they keep carrying it out, you're implicated in that crime. So I think he's certainly got a case to answer in terms of complicity in war crimes and genocide. And I think that he's going to have to worry about that both in terms of him and his maker, both in terms of him and international law, and of course the ballot box in November where a lot of people who otherwise liked Biden and defended him like I did up until October 7th are saying, how can we vote for this guy who has so much blood on his hands? Is there any American president, at least living American president, that you don't think is potentially guilty of war crimes? I think, sadly, the history of post-war U.S. foreign policy is that every president has either committed or, or been complicit in war crimes around the world. Uh, even poor old Jimmy Carter, who I'm a big fan of, um, you know, supported the Shah of Iran at some of the most brutal periods. And we can go through different foreign policy periods. I think, I think Noam Chomsky was asked this once, and I think he, he glibly said Gerald Ford might be one who probably didn't get involved in anything specifically during his presidency, at least. Uh, maybe Jimmy Carter. Uh, sadly, look, it's not about individuals. I know we can personalize this to American presidents. The reality is we have an American government, a military industrial complex, which is complicit in horrible crimes against humanity around the world. And I mean, I, I, it's your interview, but I'd love to turn it around and say, do you think there's a president who hasn't done horrible things around the world, who hasn't been complicit in the killing of innocent people? It's hard to think of it. Reagan, Bush, Obama, drone strike. I mean, it's very hard, sadly. And this is why, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing at Zateo is to try and cast a light on things we don't really talk about in our political system or our media, which is our country is complicit in horrible crimes around the world. The rest of the world knows it, but most Americans aren't aware of what's being done in our name and wouldn't support it if they did. What American wars in the last hundred years do you think were just? Great question. I feel like I'm in a Chomsky hot seat right now. Um, I think uh, I'm going to say World War II. Was it carried out in a just way? I mean, you know, without getting into kind of uh, undergraduate level philosophy, uh, you know, you, there is a distinction between just cause and just means and how you fight the war versus why you fought the war. I think World War II was a very just cause, defeating Hitler. Do I agree with the new king of Hiroshima and Nagasaki? No, I think those were war crimes. Uh, I think they were, you know, and the firebombing of Dresden, which the Israelis now keep citing as, see, we could do it too. Well, those were war crimes. Don't was, that gen war. was that genocide in your mind? That's a good question. I think a case where we didn't have the, uh, the genocide convention in the same way at the time, but if you look at some of the things that some of the generals, British and American generals were saying at the time, they were quite genocidal statements. Uh, was it genocide? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I, I definitely think there's a case to have a debate about it. If you're, if you're wiping out entire populations... Um, again, intent is important, right? Jamie, this is what we've been arguing about for the last few months. Uh, that's what the ICJ looked at. I would need to know what was the intent. I don't think FDR's intent was to wipe out Japan. I think his intent, there's a big debate, as you know, about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which historians are having. One of the arguments was the nuke was, just, was dropped not to destroy Japan or defeat Japan, but to show the Soviet Union what we could do, right? There's a big debate about strategies and stories. I wrote about it in grad, in grad school in your home country of London at, at LSE. So I, I am well aware of the debate.